evening, and welcome to We the People, brought to you by the League of Women Voters of Minneapolis. My name is Joan Higginbotham, and I'll be your host for this evening's program. Tonight, we're going to talk about net neutrality. It doesn't have anything to do with fishing in northern Minnesota or playing the game of tennis. But we will tell you that it affects you, almost everybody. If you have a cell phone, if you watch flicks on TV, you are a person who needs to know a little more about net neutrality, and that's what we're going to do tonight. Our guest this evening is Professor Bill McGivern, and he is uh, at the law school at the University of Minnesota. And I guess the first thing we should do is say, okay, what is net neutrality for the average person? Well, it's a, it's a, the idea about neutrality meaning that there, all the content you can get online, and online might be on your computer surfing the internet, or it might be on your phone, but all the content you get online gets treated equally. That the uh, internet service provider or the telecommunications company doesn't pick and choose between different websites or different services that you might be able to get. And it doesn't do them at different speeds. So, so what would that mean to me if I, so say I've got, well I have, Comcast. So if Comcast didn't believe in net neutrality or wasn't following it, what, would that, what could that mean to me? Well, a company like Comcast or other ISPs, internet service providers, that wanted to, for example, charge websites more for getting loaded faster um, might make money that way, but you as an internet user would maybe not be able to reach certain sites or you might get some sites loaded blazing fast and others taking forever. Uh, right now, for the most part, the situation is wherever you want to go on the internet, you can go there and the ISP just treats it all the same. It's the same speed for everybody. Same speed for everybody and certainly nobody needing to pay a premium, sometimes they call it pay to play, uh, to get faster uh, download times but or to get access. If I'm company X with lots of dollars, maybe I could pay a little more and my stuff would get there faster. And not get there faster, but be played faster. That's exactly the concern, right. Yeah, but the other thing is I'm thinking about the League of Women Voters. I mean, we don't have a lot of money. So our website would probably be trickling along at no speed at all. In the world without any net neutrality and a lot of pay to play, nonprofits and individuals are gonna lose out to big companies in terms of how much their websites and their apps can get seen. So and now we, we were just talking before we went on the air about the example of the firefighters in California. Right, so it's, sometimes it's about even having access, but more often it's about what's called throttling, basically making things happen at less of a speed. Um, and there's lots of reasons why you might have legitimate throttling, like uh, there's so much usage in the area that everybody needs to slow down, but that's still equal, right? That's still neutral. Um, but the example that's been in the news recently about these uh, uh, firefighters in the California wildfire is that their, their fire department had a cell phone system, communications system, um, and the telecommunications company was throttling their speed. Slowing based it on, down. Yeah, based on they were using it so much. Well, guess why they were using it a lot? They were pretty busy. Yes. So they went above their use levels and then they got throttled. Um, and uh, when they complained, the, the, apparently the telecommunications company said, well, you can pay us more. Really? Yep. Even then, even then when they knew what well, had happened. eventually they gave in, but their first response was, sorry, that's the policy. Well, so does that mean that I'm going to get screwed up, screwed with later on? I mean, if I don't pay extra, I pay, I pay a humongous amount now. Right. And there's two different things here. There's making the people whose website it is yeah, pay more it, to get delivered. Right. And then there's you with your cell phone contract paying more for different speeds. The big thing, though, is making everyone get treated equally, right? So it might be okay to say, all right, if you want to have a bargain internet connection that's slow, but that's all you need to check your email, you pay one price, and someone who plays online video games or watches tons of movies can pay a lot more for a faster speed. Net neutrality isn't as worried about that. Uh -huh. It's worried about picking and choosing between different content providers. So the League of Women Voters being treated differently from you know, a, a commercial website that's mm -hmm. selling something. Yeah, and so now the, the thing that made us all sit up and take notice was that in June, there was a law passed mm -hmm. and by both houses of the mm -hmm. U.S. Congress to get rid of net neutrality. Yeah, 
So what does that mean? Well, it's confusing. There has been years of litigation and fighting about this in Washington. Um, but the short version really is the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, made some rules that would require telecommunications companies to maintain net neutrality. And they fought it pretty, pretty strongly. First, they fought it in the courts. They won one time, and the FCC went back and wrote the rules again. They won a second time in court. The FCC went back and wrote the rules again. And then the third time the FCC <laughs> did it. Keep trying. Yep. If at first you don't succeed, the third time the FCC did it, then with the change in administration, Congress and the president signing it, did away with those rules, uh, even though this time they had succeeded. So the, rule, the rules were neutral. Yes. The rules are you must be neutral. Yeah. And now that's no longer the case. Right. Now, one of the things the companies point out is they say, don't give us these burdensome rules about being neutral. We are neutral. <laughs> but, well, okay. Some of them, even for Comcast, your example, has run advertisements promising to be neutral. But they say they don't want the government to force them to do it. And I've got a bridge I'll sell you, too. Yeah. You know, and the same companies that sued to overturn the rule, of course. Yeah. So they, the, the, they sued and they, they went back to court until the administration changed. And Mr. Ajit Pai, Pai. Yes, he's Commissioner Pai. very keen that, that this yeah. is the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. Well, he's, he's been an opponent of network neutrality for a long time. So appointing him the head of the FCC pretty much was the death now. So I know we said before we started, I said, well, is it, does it, bot, is it even worth our talking about this because it's done? And you said... Well, there's a few things going on. One of the most important is that a number of states are passing their own network neutrality laws now. They're saying if the federal government won't do it, we will. And most importantly, uh, uh, just within the last several weeks, the state of California, the Assembly and the Senate there passed a really very, very strong law. In fact, stronger than the stuff that they had in Washington in the Obama administration. Um, at this point, the governor hasn't signed it, but he's expected to, and then that will be the law in California. Washington State, New York State, some others have done things too. Now, I, I did do a little research, and it, as they pointed out, California is like the eighth largest economy in the world. Sure. So it's, if it does it, then that, they really have to sit up and listen, don't they? I agree. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, that's why the California law is getting more attention than some of these other state rules, in addition to the fact that it's stronger. But you better believe it will get challenged in court once again. But, and, and now, I, I, and one argument which makes sense to me also is that if every state had its own law, yeah. which is sort of the way it's going now, then it would be really difficult for the providers to, to do anything. That's, that is definitely an argument they make. And they, they, some of them argue that, that, in fact, under the law, it has to be federal and uniform and that the states aren't even allowed to do this. Um, and that makes a point because it's easy to say net neutrality, but deciding exactly what the rules should be turns out to be fiendishly complicated. I happen to think the FCC did a pretty good job, but it's hard because, of course, you do want companies to not be neutral about you know, spam or spyware. You want them to filter that stuff out based on its content. So how do you tell the good filtering from the bad? Right, and, and I guess the, so we could go back to the, the expense, too. I mean, some of us pay more for a bigger package of mm -hmm. data that we can have mm -hmm. and use, right. and we understand that that's fair enough, but maybe, right. we, maybe the consumer does have to pay more if they want a faster speed. Yeah, again, it's the, the neutrality aspect of it is making sure that different kinds of sites get treated equally. So that so that I would pay the same as somebody else who asked for more data or not, not more data, but faster data. For the same whatever. amount, right. So, yeah. it, so, so if, a, if a telecom company wants to have four different packages at four different speeds with four different prices, that's fine. People understand what they're paying for, and some people only need slow and cheap, and other people need fast and expensive. But if, with, if net neutrality gets violated, then whatever package you pay, you might discover that the League of Women Voters site is less available to you than your provider's corporate partners. Right. That is that is the other. Now, so that's a whole other aspect to it. Yeah, is, that's the biggest that's part. That's the pay-to-play part. That's right. And it could be pay-to-play. It could be, in theory, maybe even political. Right? You could have a, a provider owned by, you know, 
someone with a certain kind of a philosophy and maybe they would block certain kinds of sites. It's hypothetical now, mm -hmm. but the current lack of rules allows that. The real question is, is the, the company more like the phone company, which whatever number you dial, they put through your call and they're totally neutral as to what you say on the call, or are they more like a newspaper or like Facebook that has an algorithm that decides what to show you mm -hmm, and what not mm -hmm. to show you? And net neutrality supporters want it to be more this independent, neutral thing, just like the phone company. Anyone wants to say anything, they can and get treated the same. But can that really happen? I think it can. I mean, I think under good net neutrality rules, you'll allow the right kind of filtering, but you'll say you're not allowed to pick and choose between sites for, uh, your, for charging more or for their content or for other uh, prohibited reasons. Well, it is a really scary thought that the government, well, somebody, could make some regulation that they didn't like. I mean, it could be a religious thing or right. a political thing or any kind of thing. Well, and so but if the government did it, of course, it would violate the First Amendment. But the First Amendment doesn't prevent companies from picking and choosing. No. You know, no one has a right to appear in the New York Times. No one has a right for Facebook to post their status update. Um, and so if we allow it in the law for companies to pick and choose who gets to be heard, then the original dream of the internet being this open town square could really turn into a repeat of kind of corporate media that in the later part of the 20th century, people thought the internet was the solution to that. Right, because then everybody could get whatever they wanted exactly. and it wouldn't cost anything. The, the wonder of the internet when it first became popular in the 1990s was no one's going to be holding the choke point anymore. You won't, you won't have to uh, pay to play. You won't have to be someone famous who can write an op-ed in the New York Times. You can get out there. You can be on Facebook. Yeah. You I mean, public access television was a response to that control of communications. Right. One way for people to get access to the airwaves in a reasonable way. And that's why we're here tonight. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Now, I thought it was interesting that somebody said, well, if we had not had net neutrality, Google, Amazon, Facebook, all of those humongous companies were able to do that because they didn't have any resources when they started out. Right. I mean, the, the both sides claim to be on the side of innovation, right? The telecommunications companies say, we want to be able to experiment with different ways of picking and choosing content to serve you better. Mm -hmm. um, but some of the real big, shot, big uh, heavyweight companies that support net neutrality are some of the platforms, the Silicon Valley companies. And they point out, just as you said, um, whether you're a startup or an established company, an even playing field lets the marketplace of ideas decide which websites are successful. But I suppose you could make the other argument that, you know, if you're just a tiny little company, you don't have to pay as much. And then right. if you're a big company, you have to pay a right. mammoth amount. Sure, although you can afford it. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, right. it, 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 there's, there's no amount that Facebook wouldn't be able to afford to pay if net neutrality went away. They'd yeah. be fine. They would, still be, they would still be able to do whatever they wanted to do. Indeed. Well, is there any, are, are there any groups that are out there fighting this? I mean, is there any, you know, like organizations that people can say, I want to go on their website and find yes, out what they're doing? Yes, absolutely. So um, an, there's an organization in Washington, D.C. called Public Knowledge that's very strong on, on supporting net neutrality and also um, uh, intellectual property rules. And also the Electronic Frontier Foundation, mm -hmm. EFF, has been a real advocate and was one of the boosters of the California law we were talking about. Now, I, as I look to see supporters and non-supporters, it was interesting because most of the people who were opposed to net neutrality, I mean, most of the people who were in support of it were the ones, the names that you hear in the news all the time. But there were f many fewer people who were, who were opposed to net neutrality. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's a bunch of sort of free market type of think tanks that think that um, net neutrality is too much regulation and is a bad idea. Um, certainly the big telecommunications companies. All, so you have businesses on both sides. Telecommunications companies say net neutrality is bad. Silicon Valley and platforms like Facebook and Google and Amazon say it's great. Because? Because it helps them. It makes, it makes it free for them to have access. If, if, uh, well that's, that's a very good point. So in other words, a, somebody like Amazon, where people are clicking on it all the time, mm -hmm. 
would have to pay more. Maybe. Or well, we have to pay it all. Right now, they don't have yeah, to pay for special that's treatment. Right. But, but you think about that, and, and of course, people would get very irritated, right? If you're, I would think. If you're trying to order something, and, right. and even smaller places like restaurants, if, they, if you call up the local deli mm -hmm. to get your dinner delivered, and it's mm -hmm. very slow, it's going to take you a while to get there and make your everything. Absolutely. And right, their website's loading really slowly or something. And the, those would they, be the people right. who would suffer because yes. they would be small. Yep, that's what the advocates say. It's, it's startups, small businesses, the places that don't have the resources to pay up. Now again, I want to say that telecommunications companies always point out you're worrying about something that hasn't actually happened yet for the mm -hmm. most part, that they don't charge websites for getting faster loading, at least now. Um, but as of this moment, there's nothing in federal law that prevents them from starting to do that tomorrow. You want to monetize everything. Right. And so that would be the perfect place to start. I mean, right. if I were a business person, I would think about that. Right. right. Uh, some people think the problem is that the, the comp none of the companies wants to do it first because they fear the public relations backlash that would meet them. But it, you can imagine that once it got started, right. it, you could never get the genie back in the bottle. I think that you? might be so. I mean, unless you, unless you change the rules again and uh -huh. say, we're going to go back to a net neutrality rule. So do you think that there'll be sort of a mid, mid not a mid, a mid-level there will be some things that you'll pay them for. I mean, somebody was talking about somebody who watched video games all the time. Yeah. Should they pay more than yeah. me? And again, <laughs> I think they should, right? So the idea of the consumer's price being different depending on how much speed you have, that's okay, net neutrality or not, paying for what you are going to get. But it's, the idea is that it's perfectly transparent. They tell you, this is how fast it will yep. be. If you want it faster, call us up and we'll upgrade you to our next level of service. For the consumer, the thing that's worrisome, I think, is the idea that the, the company could not only be charging you for your internet connection, but could turn around and charge all the websites you're looking at for being downloaded fast. Mm -hmm. and, and that would be a second source of income for the companies. You're, you are, and you I'm, wouldn't know. I'm paying to get, my, to get a faster speed. Right. The, the people that I'm watching or listening or whatever, they're yes. paying so that I can get the higher speed. That's right. And then it would so be, they get paid on both ends. That, the, that's, the, what, that's the concern is what would happen. That, you know, supporters of net neutrality say, don't worry, guys, you can make plenty of money by charging your internet consumers, as everybody who opens their bill every month perfectly well knows. Yes, this is but, true. But don't also try and get money out of the websites. Well, to, I guess when you look, when you look at it, um, it seems pretty obvious that it would really, really cut into the smaller guy. That's the theory. And, and, and if it really took off, what would probably happen, some economists say, is you'd have some big companies that went around, you know, being the host. So your corner deli and your florist and so forth would have to join up with big national conglomerates in order to really have access to the web. Where now, if you want to start a blog, you want to put up a website for your small business, you just register a domain name and uh, download a little software, you're good to go. That's the only thing you pay for. That's true. So all of these people who have made a fortune by starting their own little blogs, which became you mm -hmm. know, their household names, some of those folks right. now, yeah. and they, they would probably now have to pay a small fortune. That, I think that's right. To yeah. get their stuff right. out there. And, and to me, the most compelling part of it is, you're absolutely right about the effect on businesses and the little guy, but ultimately, what does that mean for me as a web surfer, someone who's the viewer of the internet? And what it means is, instead of this wide That's open, right. every view is welcome, my uh, access to all different kinds of ideas, all different kinds of businesses will be constrained by you know, whatever my t phone company or internet company decides to do. Yeah, and so you could you could maybe watch them, but they would be it would be very slow. You could maybe That's access right. them, or, or 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 not at all. Or not at all. Again, under net neutrality, they could say, um, you know, if you'd like to be available and not show up as an error message, give me some money. Now again, um, it's complicated. It would be easier to write this rule if it just said, uh, telephone company plug into the internet and show us everything without any 
choices being made. But in fact, nobody wants that because we do need the companies to, for example, block malicious sites and spam. So they have to be able to do a little picking and choosing, but we want it to be based on the right reasons that are in favor of the consumer, not trying to make money or censor. So what is happening now? Well, so right now, as I say, one of the arguments the telecommunications companies make is, you don't need this rule. Don't worry, we're not doing this. Um, consumer advocates and companies like Facebook say, yes, but you could and it would be perfectly legal tomorrow, so we need to protect ourselves to prevent you from this obvious thing you might do to make a lot of money. But now the, 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 the checking or checkings that we don't get bad stuff, um, right. that, that's already being done doing and that. that would have to be continued, but mm -hmm. then it might, it, that would be, there's a cost to that of course also. Right, well and that's part of what's in your bill is the, is the work they do to prevent malicious software from coming at you. Now what happens, in, what's, what's the story internationally? Yeah, so um, there's a, there's, uh, Europeans pretty much have network neutrality. Um, a lot of places, internet is more heavily regulated, like a little bit of a, almost more like a utility mm -hmm. um, than it is here. In fact, the, the geeky law story for like 30 seconds is one of the things the FCC did at the end of the Obama administration to try and bring in network neutrality was they essentially used some of their power to say internet companies are kind of like utilities and that's why we right. think can do this. That's yes. why it's justified. So there is that view in other countries that they're more like the, the electric company, company or the, or the uh -huh. gas company. And so that makes them a lot more um, regulated and controlled as to what they do. In some places, they're not even profit making. Really? Yeah. But they still have to do it. Yeah. So as we, so Canada, for example, our neighbor. Yeah. Net neutrality there? That's a good question. I'm not sure about Canada. I know about Europe having a lot of net neutrality mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. most countries. I don't know about Canada. Well, now, as we as we go forward, there's 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 definitely going to be some changes. And is it going to be easy enough for? I mean, as a, the the big businesses are going to stay the big business. I mean, it's not going to. Yeah. Is, is it really going to impinge upon their ability to make money? Right. Well, so for the telecommunications companies, the they say um, if we're going to grow and continue to invest in new products, we have to be maximizing our profit every place we can. Charging our customers is one way. Maybe we should be able to charge websites too. Um, another uh, thing that they point out is they say, well, if you're worried about big companies picking and choosing what you get to see, you know, of course, newspapers and television uh, stations have done that for many mm -hmm. years. Um, and then if you look at places like Facebook and Google and Amazon, which are run by their big data algorithms, True. they're all making choices. In fact, they were in Washington testifying very recently about that. That's true, because, and that is one of the things that we want them to do, right? right? Because we want to make sure that, that the Russians aren't uh, flooding our airwaves right. with negative stuff. So it's tricky. Uh, so they sort of say, you're treating us unfairly. You're letting all of these other companies pick and choose, but how come we can't pick and choose? The advocate's answer is because you are like the phone company. You're the pipe between mm. the people who are talking and the people who are listening. And the pipe should be neutral. And that's where that net neutrality phrase comes from, network neutrality. Right, right. Now, of course, I'm just thinking about the telephone company doesn't have any control over what you say on the telephone. That's right. Or, or really to whom you say it. Right? Yeah. They don't normally say, oh, I'm sorry, uh, you can't have a telephone because of your, you know. Got a potty mouth and so right, you can't exactly. see it. Exactly, right. But now, on the other hand, we're trying to do something to keep children from being bullied on the internet. So mm -hmm. there yeah. is a... I, I think there's lots of differences though. So that's the argument that the telecommunications companies make. Let us pick and choose and... We're uh, doing a good job and, now. And, 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 is that right. right? And they also say we're not picking and choosing now. We, some of them promise not to in the future. Don't make a rule to prevent it. But, you know, as you point out, Joan, Facebook uh, of course picks and chooses the content because they're a website with words. They're picking the words. It's really different than just 
uh, plugging some cables into your wall and letting everything that's out there come in. True enough. Well, I, I think about, as I said earlier, I think about all these people that just want a small website. I mean, they don't want to do anything big, but yet they'd like people to be able to see it and, and have sure. a part of it. Sure. And really, that it seems like those are the people that are just going to get knocked off the map. So I think that's speak. right. And, and where will they go? They will need to join their content up with big companies. So if you're someone who thinks the dream of the internet was to move from a corporate media culture to an individualized media culture. Well, that's what we thought. That's what we thought. And there are ways in which that's not true anymore and ways in which it still is. But a lot of people who really support that vision for the internet think that without net neutrality, it's dead. Well, it, it, I guess I just from uh, when you think about some high school girl showing other girls how to apply makeup, and the next thing you know, she's a, a star. Uh -huh. I mean, I sort of like that happening. I, I like that too. Now, you know, I, I keep giving the telecommunications companies point of view no, just because I'm trying to, to be even-handed yes. here, but um, they would point out that the odds are high that that high school girl is putting her video on YouTube, right. not on some independent little that, site. That is true, too. And a lot, uh, increasingly, right, it, people who were early adopters of the internet in the 90s, I mean, of course, the internet existed for many decades, but when we really started to all know about what it was in the 90s, um, they envisioned a world where everyone would just kind of hang up their shingle all by themselves and everybody would be independent. The truth is, if you're posting things online as an ordinary person, an awful lot of the time what you're doing is posting through Facebook, this is through true. YouTube, yep, that is true. through you know, other sites that are and big aggregators. And we don't even think about that, right. that we're doing that. We still think it's our stuff and yeah. we're putting it up there, right. even though we, we are part of a conglomerate when, that, yeah, when it comes sure. to that. So, well, it, I hope that tonight you have learned a little bit more and we've give, give, made it clearer to understand what net neutrality is all about and not more complicated, but you can see it does affect you. So, we hope that you'll tune in again to We the People. Our guest this evening, Bill McGivern from the University of Minnesota. Thanks for being with us. Thanks. We man. appreciate it. Thanks. And this is Joan Higginbotham for the League of Women Voters saying good night and thanks for tuning in to We the People. <laughs>